Take a look at some of these shorts. This one, 9.9 .9 million views. Here's another short, 3.7 million. Here's another short, 1.4 million views. Here's another one, 1 million views. Here's another one, 16.2 million views. And without doing the thing I'm gonna talk about in this video, these shorts wouldn't have anywhere near the amount of views that they currently do. But before I can reveal exactly what I'm talking about, you need to understand a little bit about how the YouTube algorithm works. So the algorithm's job is to make YouTube money, which it does by trying to keep users on the platform for as long as possible. And it keeps users on the platform for as long as possible by continually recommending them content. So it could be long form videos or YouTube shorts that they actually want to watch. And so recommending the right videos to the right viewers is essential in the algorithm's job description because if it doesn't do this, people are gonna get frustrated because they're not gonna be served videos that they actually want to watch. And so they're gonna leave, which is bad because YouTube doesn't get money. But how does this recommendation system actually know what each piece of content is and how to connect it to the right viewer? Well, there are a bunch of different ways but the primary one, especially for shorts, is a method called collaborative filtering. It's probably gonna be easier for me to explain collaborative filtering to you through an example. So let me pull up a whiteboard and actually draw this for you. I want you to imagine that all of the viewers on YouTube have been categorized by the type of content they like to watch, their interests. So for example, we might have cat lovers over here. We might have Fortnite players over here. We might have crime lovers over here, like true crime. Maybe we have small YouTubers over here. Maybe we've got business owners over here. All of these different audiences, you get the idea. And in the middle here is our piece of content. And how collaborative filtering actually works is it looks at viewing history of users on the platform and then uses that data to figure out what other people would also like to watch those types of videos. So for example, what YouTube might do for this particular piece of content that we've created is it might promote it to a small amount of true crime lovers. It might promote it to a small amount of cat lovers. It might promote it to a small amount of small YouTubers. And when it's promoting, or rather I should say testing our content with all the different audiences, what it's looking for is how do these audiences respond to your content? And by respond, I mean, do they click on it? Do they watch it all the way to the end? Do they click on it and only watch it for a little bit? Do they not click on it at all, et cetera, et cetera. So for example, let's say that this piece of content we have in the middle is actually a video or short about how to get YouTube views. So YouTube's gonna do its best to figure out what this content is so that it can recommend it to what it thinks are relevant audiences, but ultimately it's just gonna test it with a bunch of different people. But what happens is when it promotes our how to get YouTube views video to cat lovers, they're not interested. When it promotes our how to get YouTube views to crime viewers, they're not interested. Fortnite viewers are not interested. Business owners, not interested. However, when it promotes it to our small YouTuber audience, our small YouTubers want to get more views. And so they respond positively to this video. They click on it, they watch it, they engage with it. And the algorithm's like, oh, there's something positive going on here. And so what it does is it starts to promote this video even more to small YouTubers and to a larger percentage of this audience. And if they continue resonating with this video, it will promote the video again to an even larger portion of this audience. And that's how a video gets more and more views. So how good a video is, is completely relevant to the audience who is actually watching that video. Even if we have the best how to get views video in the world, if it's being watched by people who don't want to learn how to get views on YouTube, they're not gonna click on that video or they're gonna leave that video and the algorithm is going to kill our video. So now let me clear this up and talk about how this works in the context of YouTube Shorts. Now earlier I said to get some data initially the algorithm is going to promote your video to slightly more general audiences. And for long form videos the way it can do this is just by having this video show up in the home page, having this video show up in recommended, and then use the title and thumbnail of that video to work out what kind of viewer would actually be interested firstly in just clicking on this video. But for shorts we don't have a title and thumbnail, all we have is a video usually because people are just scrolling on the YouTube shorts feed. And so the way collaborative filtering works with shorts is basically Basically, you'll create your how to get views on YouTube short. And YouTube's gonna push this short out to, again, a very small amount of people in some general niches that it thinks are related to the content. And if one of these small test audiences, when they recommended the short, actually really watch it and enjoy it, the algorithm will look at that, be like, hey, let's send this short to more similar users. So it's gonna promote it to 
a larger portion of this audience and it's getting it more views and that short's gonna grow and grow and grow like we talked about earlier. But in order for this audience to actually watch and engage with this video, this short has to have a pretty damn engaging intro that screams to them basically like, hey, this short is about how to get views on YouTube. So all the small YouTubers see that and like, I'm gonna spend a bunch of time watching this. So basically the beginning, the intro of your short or the hook we call it, not only does it have to keep people watching, but it has to do the same thing that a title and thumbnail would do. It has to clearly state and represent what this short is about so that it filters out people who aren't going to be interested in this short and attracts people who are. So let me give you an example that most of you guys watching can probably relate to. I'm going to play a clip from a longer piece of content that I've been considering cutting down into a YouTube short. Now give this example a watch. One of the things that I really struggled with to be honest was embarrassment. I was terrified that my friends were going to find out about my channel and be like, you know, this dude's just some loser who's desperate for attention and social validation. And believe it or not, that's not the kind of thing that makes people invite you to parties. Now, I'm not sure if you could tell, but this clip is basically about how I overcame the embarrassment of not getting very many views on my videos when I first started my channel. Now, in this clip, I go on to tell the story of like how I felt and then share the mindset shift that helped me get over that embarrassment. I think it's an okay clip for a short, but the problem is our hook, our intro, the first like three to five seconds, they're very vague and general. One of the things that I really struggled with, to be honest, was embarrassment. I was terrified that my friends were gonna find out. Now, since you're watching this video, you might have a rough idea of who I am. And so maybe you would have guessed the context of this clip. But if you didn't have that context, you would have had no idea what this short is actually about. And that's a massive problem. Because if we come back to our whiteboard, if I did take this clip and post it to my channel as a short, one of two things would probably happen. Either my hook or the beginning bit of this video is too vague and general, just doesn't grab people well enough. And so when the algorithm tests promoting this to lots of people no one actually watches it in which case it's just gonna die completely or the other thing it could do is if this hook is interesting enough that it catches people's attention because it's so general and vague this short is gonna start getting views from cat lovers from true crime lovers from Fortnite enthusiasts from business owners and from our small youtuber audience who we actually want to target and the problem with this is that as soon as our cat lovers our true crime lovers our Fortnite lovers etc discover that oh this is actually a short about how to grow on YouTube, something that is not relevant to me at all, they're going to leave that short. They're gonna swipe away, it's gonna kill my retention, and it's gonna send really negative signals to the YouTube algorithm. Because the algorithm is gonna think, well, this short is relevant to cat lovers and true crime lovers and Fortnite enthusiasts, etc., because they did watch the first bit of it, but then after they watched the first bit, they left immediately. So maybe it's just a bad piece of content and I shouldn't promote it to anyone. Your shorts have to be decent quality regardless to actually get people to watch them. But if you have decent shorts and they're not getting views, this is the mistake you're probably falling into. So remember these examples I showed you earlier. Something interesting you can actually see, if we come down to the views graph, we can see that for the first period of this short being live, it didn't get very many views relative to how many views it ended up with. This one only got about 50,000 views after 160 days before exploding to almost 5 million views. This one grew really slowly as well until bang, we see this explosion here. We see the same pattern with this short. So what's actually happening here is for this beginning period where this short doesn't get very many views, the algorithm is learning. What it's doing is it's promoting this short to a tiny portion of the small YouTuber audience and some of those people are clicking and watching, which is a big green tick. But then it goes on and it promotes to the cat lover audience and they don't watch, they swipe away. So the algorithm's like, oh, okay, is this actually a good video? So it goes back and it promotes it again to our small YouTuber audience, slightly larger portion, they reciprocate, they watch that video. And the algorithm's like, oh, okay, what's going on here? Let me test this again. And it tests it with the true crime audience. True crime doesn't watch because they don't care. And so what we can see here is the algorithm going through this process of testing, promoting our short to small segments of different audiences and getting feedback, getting data. And it gets enough positive data from our relevant audiences to tell it, hey, there's something here, I should keep promoting this. But it's not getting a clear enough signal to know who to push this short to en masse. Until round about here, you can see we go from like 1,000 views in 100 days to getting like 50,000 views. And then from here, the algorithm just goes all out and just promotes it to like 5 million people. Which is basically, it's promoting it to a smaller group here, it's promoting it to a bigger group, a bigger group, and it realizes, hey, 
this video is meant for small YouTubers. And so then it just promotes it to all small YouTubers, all in one go. And that's why we see this sort of explosion of views. And so if you've got a really good short, it's okay if it doesn't get a huge amount of views in the beginning, but what's important is that short needs to have an intro that is really appealing to your target audience, but that also correctly filters out people who would not be interested in watching that short. And if you do that correctly, the algorithm will learn and eventually you should see an explosion of views. And so to fix this, we're gonna make some changes to our short's intros or hooks. Now, obviously the easiest way to fix this is to just script your short in a way that the first few seconds of it really clearly tell people what your short is going to be about and hooks them to keep watching it. But that's not always possible. Going back to our example here, if I'm gonna use a clip from a talk I gave, I can't go back in time and like re-script what I actually say in the talk. So what we can do instead is use three powerful techniques. The first one is to figure out the vibe of other really successful and popular shorts in your niche or in very related niches. So what I mean by that, for example, if we come and look at shorts that are about PowerPoint presentations, this is the first second of this short, it's done pretty well, 66,000 likes what we can see is there is a PowerPoint presentation full screen and there is text that says, don't make slides like this. So immediately I can see basically, you know, this is about PowerPoint and it's probably going to be a tutorial, which I can gather from this text. Or here's another one. Again, we can see the PowerPoint UI and we can see text that says me before I understood PowerPoint. PowerPoint UI, descriptive slash hooky text. Another one, same thing. You get it. You can see the pattern happening here. So if I'm going out to try and create successful PowerPoint shorts, I'd probably want to start my short by showing the PowerPoint UI and having some sort of text hook on screen. And probably a very basic looking slide in that UI, as you can see all of these examples here, they're not showing like some really fabulous, amazing presentation right off the bat. They're showing something bad. So this is clearly a format that works. And if I was to model it and emulate it for my own PowerPoint shorts, it would give me the best chance of succeeding. Because when people see my PowerPoint tutorial short, they're gonna recognize the vibe from other similar shorts and probably get a feel as to what that short is actually about. If I was creating a short about how to grow on YouTube, I'd do a similar thing. I'd go to my competitors who are creating shorts that get views and I would go through all of their shorts and see which ones are getting the most views, what the format is, how it's structured. Here, for example, if we go to my friend Ed's shorts, we usually see a face front and center. And instead of like a static hooky piece of text on screen, we just see subtitles that show up and change as Ed's talking. So if I'm trying to create shorts about how to grow on YouTube, I'd probably want the beginning of my short to start with me on screen. And then I'd have subtitles show up as I'm talking and then maybe start introducing some overlays and elements like Ed did. But let's move on to our second trick because sometimes you might be in a situation where your niche is doing all kinds of different types of shorts or maybe you're creating shorts that are very similar to the vibe of a lot of the successful shorts in your space but they're still not getting results. And so I would usually try to test having some sort of text on screen right at the beginning of your short that sort of summarizes what the video is about while also enticing people to continue watching. Think about it like you would a long form like YouTube video title. So coming back to my example here, if I was to turn this into a short, maybe I could have some sort of like text title on screen that says how to instantly overcome embarrassment as a small YouTuber or something like that, that basically encapsulates what's going to be delivered to them and tells them why they should keep watching. But the last trick you can use, and this is especially helpful for shorts like this one, where you're just repurposing content that you already have is to just add an intro to it. So I could actually just record an intro then use my editing software to stitch that onto the beginning of this clip. Or if you don't have the time to do that, is actually to have, have an AI, AI voice, voice intro your short, short before, before it, it plays. plays. And I wanna show you a couple of really cool examples of that now. The winner of my latest lineup competition. I played with a young fan That's in Immortal. So if I was to write an AI intro for this particular clip, maybe I could have the AI say something like, how I overcame the embarrassment of not getting views on my YouTube videos when I first started. So with this, you're kind of doing a similar thing that you did when you were using text, but using an actual intro gives you a bit more freedom because it lets you say a bit more because text can be a bit limiting because there's only so much text you can actually put on a screen and still keep it readable. And so now you understand how the algorithm works. You can go out there, create great intros for your shorts that are enticing, yet filter out the people who shouldn't be watching your short from the people who should, all in the first couple of seconds. And it'll do that, the algorithm will learn. Eventually, you'll figure out exactly who your short is for. And if it's a good short and a good piece of content, that's when your short blows up and starts getting thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of views like these ones. But if you're still struggling with like, how do I create good shorts? 
shorts in the first place. I have a video on screen where I analyzed a study of over 5,400 shorts to show exactly what matters most and what's gonna keep people actually watching your short all the way to the end after you've hooked them using the techniques we've shown in this video. So that video is on screen, click it now and I'll see you there.